avoid true impoverishment of the soul. No one likes to fall, and few people would ever choose to drown. But in struggling through the ocean of this life, sometimes it is so hard not to let the world in. Sometimes the ocean does enter us. The dunya does seep into our hearts. And like the water that breaks the boat, when dunya enters a heart, it shatters it. It shatters the boat. If you allow dunya to own your heart, you will sink down to the depth of the sea. And you may feel as though you were at your lowest point. Entrapped by your sins and the love of this life, you may feel broken, surrounded by darkness. Because that's the amazing thing about the floor of the ocean. No light enters it. But this dark place is not the end. Remember that the darkness of night precedes the dawn. And as long as your heart still beats, this is not the death of it. You don't have to die here. Sometimes the ocean floor is only a stop in the journey. And it is when you are at your lowest point that you're faced with a choice. You can stay there at the bottom until you drown. Or you can gather pearls and rise back up. Stronger from the swim and richer from the jewels. If you seek Him, if you seek Him, God can raise you up and replace the darkness of the ocean with the light of His Son. He can transform what was once your greatest weakness into your greatest strength and a means of growth, purification, and redemption. Know that transformation sometimes begins with a fall. So never curse the fall. The ground is where humility lives. Take it, learn it, breathe it in, and then come back stronger, humbler, and more aware of your need for Him. Come back having seen your own nothingness and His greatness. Know that if you've seen that reality, you have seen much. For the one who is truly deceived is the one who sees his own self but not his creator. Deprived is the one who has never really witnessed his own desperate need for God. Reliant on his own means, he forgets that the means, his own soul, and everything else in existence is his creation. Seek God to bring you back, for when he does, he will rebuild your ship. The heart that you thought was forever damaged will be mended. What was shattered will be whole again. Know that only he can do this. Seek him. And when he saves you, beg forgiveness for the fall. Feel remorse over it, but not despair. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, Shaytan rejoiced when Adam alayhi salam came out of paradise. But he did not know that when a diver sinks into the sea, he collects pearls and then rises again. There is a powerful and amazing thing about tawbah, repentance and turning back to Allah. We are told that it is a polish for the heart. What's amazing about a polish is that it doesn't just clean, it makes the object that it polished even shinier and more beautiful than it was before it got dirty. If you come back to God and seek His forgiveness and refocus your life and heart on Him, you have the potential to be even richer than if you had never fallen at all. Sometimes falling and coming back up gives you wisdom and humility that you may never otherwise have had. The Prophet ﷺ has defined true richness. He has said, richness is not having many possessions. Rather, true richness is the richness of the soul. 
But how can we fill our hearts with true richness? How do we escape the constant bombardment from every direction, commanding us to worship other things, commanding us to take idols of the heart and love them as we should only love Allah? How do we escape the true poverty of allowing any competitor into our hearts? How do we escape the poverty of enslaving ourselves to another deity with Allah? Yet there are people who take for worship others besides Allah. They love them as they should only love Allah. But those of faith are overflowing in their love for Allah. To escape true poverty, we must be overflowing in our love for Allah. Ashaddu hubban lillah. Your strongest love should be for God. But you can't love someone that you don't know. We need to know him. You don't know someone that you never speak to. Speak to him. Ask of him. And you can't love someone that you don't remember. Remember him. Remember him often. And so this is a call to all those who have become enslaved by the tyranny of the self and imprisoned in the dungeon of the nafs and desires. It's a call to all those who have entered the ocean of dunya, who have sunk into its depths and become entrapped by its crushing waves. Rise up. Rise up to the air, to the real world above the prison of the ocean. Rise up to your freedom. Rise up and come back to life. Leave the death of your soul behind you. Your heart can still live and be stronger and purer than it ever was. Remember that the polish of Tawbah remakes the heart even more beautiful than it was. Remove the veil that you have sown with your sins. Remove the veil between you and life, between you and freedom, between you and light, between you and God. Remove the veil and rise up. Come back to yourself before it's too late. Because Allah says, and return to your Lord and submit to Him before the punishment comes upon you. Then you will not be helped. Brothers and sisters, the storm is coming. Seek refuge in the only place that refuge exists. Seek refuge in Allah. You and I know what day we were born. But none of us know what day we will die. And many people think that we can live our lives however we want. And then at the time of death, just say, La ilaha illallah. But at the time of death, the tongue cannot speak except what the heart commands. Whatever is in the heart will come out. The impoverished heart will have nothing but love of dunya to speak about on that day. If our heart is empty of Allah during our life, how can it be full of Allah during our death? If our heart is full of love of this life, love of status, love of wealth, love of the creation over the creator, it is that which will speak. If the heart was full of grudges, jealousy, hatred, that will speak. But if it was full of the love of Allah, that will speak. If in your life you carried only La ilaha illallah, that truly there is no refuge, no shelter, no deity worthy of worship but Him, then and only then will the tongue be given permission to say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allahumma ja'anna minhum, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.